Yo guys, what's going on? I'm Tim Kelly. This is The Real Sports Talk. Thank you guys for tuning in. I did the uh, album review the other week on J. Cole talking about Born Center and how I thought it was a tremendous album. Uh, I still didn't think it was as good as Friday Night Lights. After listening to it for a few more weeks, I've really grown to like the album. I think it is a very strong candidate to be album of the year. To, I mean, it's not better than Good Kid, Mad City, but it is a very good album. Now, Jay-Z's album... Uh, technically doesn't come out till July 9th, but if you have a Samsung phone, it came out on, they had the release party last night on 4th of July, and then I don't have a Galaxy S4 or a S3 or anything, I, I have some old shit piece of phone, piece of shit phone, but what I do have is the internet, and the idea behind uh, Samsung releasing this only releasing the album only to Samsung uh, Galaxy S3 and S4 users. It was a creative idea, but the problem is someone was going to leak it. Uh, sure enough, that did happen. I was listening on HowFlyHipHop.com. I listened to the entire album after I got home from a 4th of July party at about midnight, uh, and I stayed up till about 2 o'clock listening to this album. And i, I got to be honest, I wish I would have went to bed because this was... Uh, an extremely disappointing album for me. It started off with this sick ad during the NBA Finals a few weeks ago. Really got me excited for this Jay-Z album because we didn't hear a ton about it and it came out of nowhere. Magna Carta, Holy Grail, it was to be called and I, I expected a very good album because even though Nothing can compare to Reasonable Doubt and the original Blueprint. Blueprint. The Blueprint 3 was a really good album, I thought. So I thought it's not going to be much compared to the older albums, but if, if you compare it to the new stuff, if you compare it to what is out today, it's going to be a good album. And I didn't even feel like... Uh, the beats on this album, they were good beats, but uh, I, I'm not listening for just for the beats. I'm listening for the lyrics and everything else involved in this song, and I, I gotta be honest, it, it was just extremely dis disappointing. He had a lot of features on this album. The first one was the song Holy Grail with Justin Timberlake. I thought Justin Timberlake's intro was good. Overall, it was a forgettable song, and if I never heard it again, I would not be crushed. Picasso Baby, not a bad song. But uh, it, it didn't blow me away. The next feature was uh, with me. You know I got it with Rick Ross. And uh, there's your first problem. Rick Ross. People talk about Lil Wayne and Drake ruined the rap game. No, Lil Wayne in like 2005, 2006, the Carter 2, II, Carter 3 era. Lil Wayne was the best rapper alive. Granted, that was a very weak point in rap because Jay-Z and Eminem were both in uh, semi-retirement. But I felt like back then Lil Wayne was extremely good. He uh, has certainly fallen off at this point. Drake in like 2010, 2011 with Thank Me Later and then uh, Take Care was one of the best rappers, if not the best rapper alive. Again, very weak time in rap, but at the same time, he was putting out some very good music, especially for uh, people my age. I, I can understand why someone who is uh, 28 or 29 and past the age of... Uh, being a teenager wouldn't like Drake, but I, I thought those were very good albums. He's become mainstream, and my guess is this next album is going to suck if any if the um, singles so far are any uh, indication of what's going to come in that album. But if I continue to go through this, Rick Ross is one of the people that has actually ruined rap. This guy sucks. I am so sick of hearing him on the radio, people talking about how he's the best rapper alive and all this. I've never heard a, a song that Rick Ross has been in and said, man, Rick Ross killed that in a good way. I've, I've said it in a, in a bad way about most of the songs Rick Ross has been in, and this song was no different. I, I'm just sitting there halfway through and thinking, Rick Ross sucks. Why am I even listening to this song? Jay-Z's part in it was forgettable. He only had one out of the three verses, so that was disappointing. Then you go to Oceans with uh, Jay-Z featuring Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean's part was very good. Jay-Z's part, not bad. It, it, it was a pretty decent song. I liked it. Uh, but for being one of the better songs on the album, that's where this got to be disappointing. Somewhere in America might be the best song in this album. The unfortunate part is it's the shortest song in this album. It talks about Miley Cyrus uh, twerking at the end. It, it, that, that part was funny. But overall, um, it's a pretty good song for being one of the best on the album. Again, though, it's disappointing. Uh, the 11th song on this album, Part 2, On The Run, was with Beyonce. You knew that was coming, a feature with Beyonce. And 
I compare it, I, I can't help but go back and compare it to classic Jay-Z songs, and when I compare this to 03 Bonnie and Clyde, it sucked. It's not a terrible song, but if you... The problem is when you set a standard for greatness, people continue to expect you to put out music like that, and that's not what Jay-Z did on this album. Jay-Z put out a 2013 mainstream album here, and that's not what people were looking for out of him, at least not people that are hardcore hip-hop fans and really look at, Jay look at Jay-Z as one of the last great rappers that's still doing it. Uh, that's not what you got out of this album. On the Run with Beyonce, eh. I didn't do much for me. BBC with Nas, Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, and Pharrell was probably the best song in the entire album. That one is one of the few songs in this album that I will certainly download and I want to hear again. The beat's good. Nas probably is the best part on the entire album. He's been busy lately with this, with uh, doing the remix of the uh, made Nas proud, or made, uh, that, that's what the remix is called, uh, Let Nas Down with, uh, J. Cole, so he's been back in the rap game, and, uh, that, that was a really good song, and, uh, all, all the other ones, Nichols and Times, not a bad song, Blue had some, uh, Biggie Small clip, Biggie Small's clips in there, not a, I, I thought that was a pretty decent song, it was about, uh, I, I think his daughter, if I caught the drift of the song right, but again, if I go through this entire album, it is one of Jay-Z's worst albums. And I, I'm sorry, I'll, I, can, I can compare it to the Blueprint 1 and Reasonable Doubt, and I can say it sucks, and you can still say, well, it might compare to that, but it's still a good album. I can compare this to the Blueprint 3, and it is not a good album. It's just, it, it was disappointing, the beats were good, the lyrics were not, and it really felt like this was rushed and not very well put together, which is not normally what you expect out of Jay-Z, but that's the, the feeling that I got out of this, was that uh, it, it was kind of rushed together, and it just, it, was, it wasn't very good. Now, when I talk about the best rappers right now alive, a lot of people still say, oh no, Jay-Z, Eminem, and... I would still put Eminem in that category, and until this album, I still put Jay-Z in that category, because I thought Watch the Throne was pretty good, I thought the Blueprint 3, it was still good, it was not up to old Jay-Z standards, but it was still one of the best rap, uh, he was still one of the best rappers at the time, and with this, Jay-Z, this album does not have shit on Born Center from J. Cole, or Good Kid Mad City, let alone, or from Kendrick Lamar, let alone what Eminem could do this year, and, and who knows what else. I, I'm just, I'm extremely disappointed with that this album, um, and I think when we talk about the best rappers alive right now, we are looking at one and two, pick your choice. I, I would go with Kendrick Lamar one, and J. Cole two. They both put out classic albums this year, especially... In, in the case of Good Kid, Mad City, that might be the best rap album since Get Rich or Die Try, and that was a great album. I didn't even listen to Kendrick Lamar prior to that album, but someone told me it's really good, you gotta check this guy out. I went back and listened to Section 80, I went to listen to that, it was a great, great album. And uh, Magna Carta, Holy Grail, I thought would be one of the type of albums that we'd see fit that bill, but it appears Jay-Z was, uh, it j just didn't put it together in this album. Does it mean he's done? No, not necessarily, but he is 42, 43 years old, so, uh, it could mean that, and I think there's something to be said for, um, J. Cole, who t went three years in between albums, and Eminem's about to do the same exact thing, except Eminem and Jay-Z in between these, uh, Jay-Z went three years in between albums, so did Eminem, but Eminem, did the Bad Meets Evil thing in 2011, Jay-Z did Watch the Throne with Kanye West in 2012, so they, they were still rapping in between. J. Cole really kind of went away for a couple years, came back, and I know a lot of people, especially when he delayed it from the original time it was supposed to come out in January, when he delayed it all the way to June, man, I was pissed because we waited a while for new J. Cole music, Drake just put out Take Care, which was a really good album, and I'm just sitting there waiting for this, and I'm disappointed, but once I heard this, once I had time to soak in uh, Born Center, I realized it was worth the wait, and I would have waited longer for Matt Carter to hold it because I, I, we waited long enough already, and it, it just it did not make the cut for what I was expecting. Album. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe I'm wrong. Couple weeks. I am going to be on vacation. What I'm going to be doing is uh, scheduling some. Uh, one of the uploads I'm scheduling 
with, uh, it, obviously this is a sports channel, but I am doing one music thing, and it's the top 20 days of all time, and I'm thinking, and I hope there's songs on this that are worth consideration for prior to uh, making this, or listening to this album thing, I don't want to have to go back and remake the entire thing, and to listen, believe me, there, there were no songs that were close to being considered for Jay's top 20. So Magna Carta, Holy Grail, my mind very disappointed. Let me know what you guys think. Section 21.com, Facebook.com slash The Real Sports Talk, Twitter.com slash at Cash K under T R S T K A S H L E or T R S T. Follow me for sports talk, music talk, everything in between. Hope you guys.